welcome and Ijoma Onyato tonight. All is now set for President Mohamed Buhari to present the 2017 budget to a joint session of the National Assembly on December the 14th. Nigerian Communications Commission meets with telecom operators to arrive at an acceptable data pricing regime. The federal government bans the importation of cars through land borders with effect from January, eliciting mixed reactions from car dealers. And U.S. President-elect Donald Trump plans to cut government spending by cancelling the order for new claims for the American president. On Business News tonight, the president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers aligns with the Emil Cano on forex market credibility. On Sports News tonight, 2022 World Cup hosts Qatar allay fears over safety of football fans and consumption of alcohol. Hello, I'm Ibrahim Adra and from Abuja, abducted editor of Radio Benue regains her freedom after four days in captivity. We begin from Abuja, where all is now set for President Mohamed Buhari to present the 2017 budget proposal to a joint session of the National Assembly come Wednesday, December the 14th. Well, this was included in a letter to the Senate, which was read on the floor of the Upper Legislative Chamber by the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki. I crave the kind indulgence of the National Assembly to grant me the slot of 10.00 hours on Wednesday the 14th of December 2016 to formally address a joint session of the National Assembly on the 2017 budget proposal and our plans to get the country out of recession. Please extend, Mr. Senior President, the assurances of my highest regards to the distinguished senators as I look forward to addressing the joint session. Signed, Muhammad Ubuari. The Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki. The Nigeria Communications Commission has announced plans to engage with telecommunication companies to formulate a new data pricing system which would be beneficial to customers and operators. The Executive Vice Chairman of the NCC, Mr. Umar Dambata, today in Abuja, explained that the agency did not instruct telecom companies in the country to implement new charges for data. At one end of a committee room in the National Assembly are members of the Senate Committee on Communication. At the other end are the representatives of Nigeria's communication regulatory agency and telecommunication companies. This particular one will even take more time. You know. They are discussing the recent public outcry that greeted reports that effective from December 1st, 2016, consumers will begin to pay more for data. The executive vice chairman of the Nigeria Communications Commission, NCC, says contrary to reports, the commission did not increase the data tariff but was trying to protect Nigerians from an unhealthy price war between telecom operators. He said what NCC did was to introduce an interim price floor of 90 kobo per megabyte, below which telecommunication companies are not allowed to sell. This is a reduction from an initial floor price of 3 naira 11 kobo, which was suspended in 2015. The NCC does not increase price. What we provide are what we call regulatory safeguards. You know, a guide. You know, that will facilitate telcos to set their own prices or rates, as they call them. Contributing, the chief executive officer of Etisalat says the company is willing to comply with the position of the NCC. However, the CEO of MTN Nigeria is asking for a proper cost and price analysis which would factor in current inflation in the country as well as evaluation of the Naira. What's so worrying is that there is no price floor now 
And this is very worrying for the industry because when we saw no price floor at all, there was a dramatic decline of 80% in the, in the data pricing. And that's why the NCC wisely, in my view, stepped in. All of us are aware that inflation is going up and at this stage is probably in the region of 17 to 18%. We have experienced price increases in all other sectors. NCC's Executive Vice Chairman, Mr. Umar Dambata, explains that the Commission is engaging with the operators and would carry out a scientific study to determine the correct pricing for data. He concludes that the Commission is looking at a new price which would benefit both customers and telecom operators. But the telecom operators are asking that this scientific study for proper pricing should be done as quickly as possible so as not to leave operators in limbo. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. 24 hours after the federal government announced the ban on the importation of cars through the land borders with effect from January, reactions are already coming in. In Benin City, the Edo state capital, some car dealers fought the government's decision, describing it as capable of having adverse effects on their businesses. Sales of imported used cars is big business in Benin City. Everywhere you go, you will find cars put on display for sale. The decision by the federal government to ban the importation of cars by land from January does not sit well with these car dealers. Ban of the car, we can't do our trade anymore. We can't do our trade anymore. Or you want us to go back to smuggling where we don't normally pay duty before. How many of us have the license to travel to America or Europe to import vehicle trucks into this country? We have a neighboring country here because why? Our clearance price here is just too exorbitant. A container is about 3,100 euro from Europe to, 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 to Africa. You are not talking about the clearing. Clearing initially was about 1.2 million, 1.3 million, but today you will pay 2.8 million, still you will not see your container. So how do you sell the vehicle inside? We are traveling to Kotunu, buy a car there, pay duty to Nigeria government. At the end of the day, I want to close the same land border. For what for? Is he helping Nigeria or is, 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 is taking us back to hardship? So we should ask our president, what is the real problem? Why is he decide to treat us in this manner? The said government should have provided alternatives before the ban. He said we can import from America. I don't know the road to America. <laughs> How many of us that know the road to America? How many of us can go there? Uh, uh, assembly plant. Since for long we have been hearing about, about these things. We are here, the one in the east, the one in the north. Where are the vehicles? Look at the road now. We are talking about practical here. You see, look at the road. Look at everywhere. How many of those cars are on the highway? How many of the cars in town? And are they durable? We don't produce even tire in this nation. We don't produce even the rim, not to talk of the engine or neither the body or even the glass. All these things are imported. Then you want to ban the vehicle. Now you are abandoning the brown new, you are abandoning the Tukumbo. Which one do you produce for those people that you abandon? Or do we don't need to move from one place to another? Or should we check from Benin to Lagos? For these car dealers, nothing short of a reversal of the plan would suffice. To discuss this new directive and its implication on the automobile industry, I'm now being joined in the News at 10 by the Director General of the National Automotive Council, Aminu Jalal. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10, all the way from Abuja. Now, we've seen the announcement and we, we know that the ban is going to take effect, but one thing we don't know is why. Why has the government decided to do this at this time? Uh, let me point out that people can still import vehicles. Uh, usually, there used to be importation through our Nigerian ports, and then people import to other neighboring ports, and then drive them into Nigeria. But all government is saying is that uh, you can import only through the Nigerian ports. It's not that you ban importation of new or used vehicles, no. I think going from the comments earlier, in, your, in the new, new, news program. Uh, this is an initiative actually of the Nigerian Customs Service, which uh, has got uh, government approval and which we concur with, which we agree with. The main reason is that a lot of those vehicles that come in through the land borders do not pay the appropriate uh, custom duties. 
Uh, usually they are cleared or they are registered with fake uh, registration uh, uh, or rather fake papers saying they are paid the duty. So I think it's government effort to make sure they collect all the duties necessary uh, from this uh, 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 brand of vehicles or rather this uh, vehicles imported into Nigeria. So the importation is not banned. Used vehicles are not banned. It's just sure that instead of bringing them through the neighboring uh, countries, importing through the port in Benin in Togo and then driving them to Nigeria, you bring them through Nigeria ports. Uh, records show that uh, in uh, that actually, majority of the vehicles coming to Nigeria come through the Nigerian ports. If you go to Post Authority, you ask them, you will see that uh, prior to after 2014, over 20,000 vehicles come in through the ports. Around 20 to 300,000 vehicles come, come in through the ports, uh, while uh, around 80 to 100,000 come in through the land border. So, it being now, majority of the vehicles are coming in through the ports actually. Yeah, but could they not still have that same problem of not paying the right duties, even if it was not coming through the land borders? Does that issue not exist when they're coming through the sea, seaports? Obviously, you cannot drive your vehicle outside the port without paying the necessary duties. It's almost impossible to, to really come uh, through the port, to get out of the port without paying the duty. It's very difficult. All right. The grace period, we understand, is December the 31st. Do you think that time is feasible for all the new and used cars that are currently in neighboring ports at this time? Because the, the, the car dealers had mentioned that that is an issue for them as well. December the 31st, that's a couple of maybe weeks away, days away. Well, like I said, uh, I, we are not really the promoters of the directive, so... Uh, I think uh, you should refer that to the customs service. Yes. Don't you think that um, it might be an issue of revenue loss for the, on the side of the government if um, you have all the, you know, the, the cars not coming in from the land borders at a time when the government is looking to generate revenue? Is that not shutting down a, another source for them? No, uh, actually. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the vehicles that are coming through the land borders are registered without paying the proper custom duties. That is why uh, this new initiative will definitely increase government revenue because those coming through the ports will have to pay the proper custom duties. Yeah, but you Another will be issue losing... also is uh, this age limit on vehicles. I think for cars it's about 10 years now, while for commercial vehicles it's 15 years. So I think that this will ensure that uh, we have vehicles within that age range. Because those older than that usually uh, have serious issues of maintenance and with frequent breakdowns, which are really a menace on our roads. What are your plans for surveillance and enforcement um, beyond just saying that the, the ban is going to take effect? We've seen what has happened with the ban on um, importation of rice. That's still a work in progress. Um, how do you plan to enforce this? As, as I said, this is not our initiative. <laughs> it is from the customs service. Yeah, but so you I should have an idea, some customs idea service. of how the customs service. The request service for to do this uh, approval was made by the customs service to the. Yes, when the request was made, it's something you approved. So obviously, it's something that you would have sat the, down and thought the about. The customs service, uh, I think, would be the proper people to really talk about this enforcement and so on. Yes. All right. In terms of an alternative, because you did, you can't see the car dealers feeling very aggrieved and, and people who will be prospective car owners as well. Do you think that perhaps there should have been an alternative first before this ban came into effect? Uh, my, my question is if there should have been an alternative before um, the ban came into effect, if you heard that. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me, all right, let me just um, let it go there. Mr. Aminu Jalal, Director General of the National Automotive Council, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us, the ones you could share with us on the News at 10 tonight. And in part two, after the break, Inspector General of Police deploys joint task force ahead of the rerun elections in River State on Saturday. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs>